So in this video, I speak to property expert Kate Faulkner. She gives us an update on the current property market. This video is brought to you in part by Property Summits. The first property event of its kind, Property Summits is an all-day event which brings together some of the most respected and experienced names in the property industry. To download a brochure and to find out when the next event will be held, please click the link in the description below. Hi, I'm Andy from monopoly.com and on this channel, I share my experience as a property investor and landlord and also interview other investors so we can learn from their advice too. So if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now, for those of you who have not heard or met Kate Faulkner before, she's one of the UK's property experts and has appeared on BBC TV, LBC's Property Hour and ITV's This Morning. She's also written 11 books and is the creator of propertychecklists.co.uk. Busy girl. Busy girl. And it's <laughs> fair to say you know a lot about property and the economy. Yeah. So I'd like to break this video into two parts. First of all, I want to ask you, could you just share with everyone what the state of the UK property market is like at the moment? Okay, so um, there isn't one. So as mm. far as the UK property market is concerned, there's not even a property market for a particular postcode. It depends on the property in that street. So um, I could take you to, you could go to Aberdeen and currently rents are 30% lower than they were in 2014 and house prices are 26% down. Go to Northern Ireland, they're 38% down the, uh, versus 12 years ago. Oh, right. um, look in other areas, and actually Wales and Scotland are doing quite well at this moment in time, but have hardly grown since the recession. So um, when you look regionally, you see very different house prices. London, Cambridge, places like Bristol have done very well since the recession, inflation busting price increases. But most of the other areas of the country, and it's a really important fact to remember, um, that mostly house prices now, which used to always beat inflation prior to the credit crunch, are only just keeping up with inflation. And the reason that's really important is because over 50% of people own their home outright. And if you're investing in buy-to-let with cash, that means your asset is not making you any money. Right, well... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no. So you say that 50... your particular property might be doing crackingly well, so that's what you've really got to investigate. Right, okay. So you say 50% of people own their own home outright, so yeah. unencumbered, no mortgage. Correct. Oh, really? Yeah. The figures are that high, yeah. are they? And it's actually quite a natural thing to have happen, and the reason is, is uh, now that I love my stats, if you might know, so yeah. 1975 was the first year in uh, the UK we became more homeowners than renters. Right. Add a 25, 30 year mortgage on top of that, and suddenly you start to see that our 60s baby boomers, who are our first homeowners, what they're doing is they are paying their mortgages down. There is also then a different culture. So baby boomers in their sort of 60s, 70s, um, and then people who are in their 40s, 50s, don't want to keep trading up like they did. They right. want to pay that mortgage off as soon as possible. So if you actually look, the number of mortgages that are disappearing from the market, um, they're going down quite rapidly. And that's because more people are own, own their own home outright. Oh, right. I didn't know that. So in terms, so for someone considering investing then, is there any good news that you can give? So some areas are doing better than others. Yeah, or um, some roads will do better than others. So, yeah. for example, um, I come from Nottingham originally, and actually the East Midlands and West Midlands are doing quite well at the moment. They're expected over the next five years from most of the forecasters to do at least as well, if not slightly better in some cases, uh, in the early years than, say, areas like Manchester. Right. So, um, we, but if you go into Nottingham, I can show you, if you go to somewhere like West Bridgeford, which is where I grew up, yeah. that is somewhere where you get very good capital growth, and that will continue because it's a wealthy area and we're short of stock. But you go into another area like Bulwer, for example, that's more a rental market for people often who are on benefits, um, and you may, you may see a better yield, but you won't necessarily see the capital growth because that money isn't pouring into that area as much as the wealth that they have in West Bridgeford. So it's about, even within a mile, in most places I can probably show you a property that's going up, down, or staying the same, and what you've got to do is identify it. And the really good news is that not only can you identify what's happening in the market now, but typically if you invest in buy-to-let, you've got to do that for the next 15, 20 years. So yeah. wouldn't it be lovely 
to find out what's happened to properties on that road you're looking at over the last 15 to 20 years. Right. Yeah. And we've got that data because it's free yeah. sold property price data sitting on all the portals or on the land registry. Yeah. So if you find a road you like and a property you like, one of the great pieces of good news is that you can actually look to see how that property is performed, particularly during a recession. And the whole trick with making money out of buy to let is to constantly being able to hang on to it yeah. and never being able to force to sell. Manchester, I know, has performed well over recent years. Some areas develop, have. Yeah. yeah, so I was just going to say, point, yeah. it's actually drilling down into the streets, as you say, Absolutely. and not taking... Manchester it, is a whole, Manchester I can go anywhere, places. buy anything, right. and I'll be fine, because yeah. you won't be. So it's drilling down to that street. Absolutely, mm. and that's because local economies are influencing what's happening to prices and rents, not necessarily what we're seeing nationally. It's the first, we've only seen this sort of trend since the credit crunch, but it's a critical one to know about if you're a first time investor. I'd now like you to look into your crystal ball. So, <laughs> um, just Doesn't to get, everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to get your opinion. So we're in the first quarter of a new year, start of a new decade, we've got a new government in place, hopefully things will settle. What do you foresee happening in the mid to long term? Okay, so, from a price perspective, the, most of the forecasters and we on Property Check, this is one of the things we do is we track what all the forecasters are saying. Oh. They update their forecasts every six months, so we update it so you don't have to kind of go everywhere. You can just see we, we've got Savills, PwC, James Lang LaSalle. We look at all of their forecasts. We even check to see how good they were. Oh, so okay. Savills and PwC so far have been coming out top. Um, in terms of their forecasts. So um, what, we're ex what we're seeing now and we're expecting to happen over the next five years, for example, um, even with a steadier market, is lower capital growth, but the good news is higher rental growth. Right. Now, rents grow, we know, in line with wages, and we are expecting wages to continue to be higher than inflation, which is the cost of living. Yeah. So basically, um, you're looking at quite a nice, steady market. You should always be aware you could buy today in the... And, and everything could tank tomorrow. We're all worrying about the impact of Brexit and then a flu virus comes along and yeah. wipes 60 billion pounds off shares. So whenever you go into an investment, it's a risk and you just need to be aware of what that level of risk is and then you can find ways of mitigating it. Okay. So um, we, if you ask me where we'll be in the next five years, it will, we'll see steady growth. But what you're not going to see is the huge sort of 10, 20, 30% growth that we got yeah. sometimes in just one year in the past yeah. that's gone so you've got to be very very sure that buy to let and putting your money into property is going to deliver back and one of the best ways of doing that or considering it is by making sure you leverage because if you put that cash in yeah. you're not necessarily going to get as good a return as you could with a financial investment which might be ha more hands off um, if it's managed properly and you may get tax less. Yeah. So again, that's something new to the bike flat market we haven't necessarily seen before. Yeah. So it's really important to understand what your objectives are, yeah. talk to a financial advisor. I know you're investing property because you don't trust them, but as soon as you add an extra property to your wealth, you need a financial advisor to make sure you can hang on to it. So it's really important. And the second person you need to talk to is a tax person because yeah. say, for example, you're earning £50,000, You've got three kids. Your rental income adds £10,000 to your income. You might lose your child benefit. Yeah, yeah. So although you're investing in property, think financial advice first because you're investing money to make money yeah. and then tax. And then you can start looking at where's the right property for you for the amount of money you have. Right. I'm actually surprised with your prediction. I, I thought we may be looking at seeing some decent growth. The reason I say that is because <laughs> we're not making any more land, we're not building enough homes, and the supply and demand thing is, you know, will kind of force prices but up. But it's not so, the only thing that right. affects the price of a property. Um, and one of the things that's changed, particularly affecting the southeast, not necessarily the Midlands or the North, which is why capital growth there is expected to be better, whether it will or not remains to be seen, yeah. is the fact that... Um, I don't know when you... So I bought my home in the 90s, my first home, and mm. I was restricted to how much I could borrow, so I could only have three and a half times my income. Yeah. So before 2000, if the market went up more than three and a half times, it had to come back down again because nobody would lend. Right, yeah. Uh, since 2000, that cap's come off, but since 2014, the government has put a new cap on, so lenders can only lend a certain amount of money at four and a half times income. 
Yeah. And uh, people who are buying have to be assessed at 6 or 7% interest rates, not the 2% or less that they see now, right. to try and put a buffer in for the future. That has, in some areas like London, East Anglia, uh, South East, put a cap on how high house prices can go, which is why um, in areas like the Midlands and the North are expecting more capital growth, but not everywhere. Right. Um, because, albeit that supply and demand is very tight in areas like Bristol, uh, parts of London. So um, if you go to, say, Barking and Dagenham, they've got huge numbers of new builds that they oh, can be oh, building. Yeah. So that there is this government, one thing it has been quite successful at is breaking that issue between supply and demand. And you yeah. even go to areas like Oxford and Cambridge, they have been building like there's no tomorrow. Um, yeah. And every local authority has to set a local five-year local plan to say how it is going to deliver the supply needed for the population growth that's expected in that area. Yeah. So that supply and demand is going to match more. And in areas where I come from, such as Nottingham, we've got tons of land. Yeah. Manchester's yeah. got tons of land. Yeah. You know, the northeast has got tons of land, and the northeast has not only got tons of land, it's got no increase in population expected. Right. Okay. So they could, their supply and demand isn't bad, which is why their house prices are still lower than they were in 2007, mm. um, but a good rental market. It doesn't mean you can't make money, but you have to be that little bit more savvy. It's funny, I used to commute down the A13 daily yeah. 15 yeah. years ago, maybe a bit more, 20 years ago, um, and I haven't been down there for years. Oh my and word. I drove the other, yeah, like, a couple of weeks in, ago, it's and just, it's changed. It's the, wall to wall, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, flats like no tomorrow. And interestingly, a lot of shares, so huge amounts of shared ownership as well coming into London, right. um, which is good news for first-time buyers. Yeah. Um, but uh, this supply and demand argument that we've had in the past, again, that's not necessarily going to always apply in the future. Right. But the beauty of property is it doesn't matter what's happening in the market. If you're savvy about finding that individual property on a great street yeah. that uh, they can't increase any more supply of, that property, as long as mm. the economy is doing well, will always continue do to well. do well. Yeah. And when the market falls, it'll fall. So don't think that it won't, but yeah. it won't fall as much as it would do if you hadn't really put the thought uh, behind it. Yeah. It's the first time you've appeared on this channel. Are you ready for the quick fire round? Oh, right, no idea. This is a complete shock to me, but let's go for it. Coffee or tea? Oh, absolutely tea. I used to, um, I used to sell PG tips. Oh, did you? And it is by far the best tea. Uh, second would be Yorkshire and third would be, um, actually co-op tea is very good. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I did tea tastings, all sorts. Yeah, 28 different blends going to PG go. tips. That sounds good. What stands for pregestive, you didn't know that, did you? That's what PG pre is, yes, because it's good for your indigestion. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I didn't know that. Every day is a school day. I have, yeah, I have many stupid facts in my head. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite snack? Oh, I'm a devil for crisps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah chocolate yeah. comes a close second, but I'll probably go for crisps. Yeah. Uh, particularly, it's quite embarrassing to admit, but I like the really cheap tortilla crisps because they're really salty. Oh, no, do you have oh, the man. dips as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, yeah I, do, I do like a bit of a hummus. Chilli hummus. <laughs> yeah. If you could sit down and chat to someone for 20 minutes for inspiration, who would it be? Do you know what? She's not around, which is quite sad. Uh, but one of the people I respected most was Mo Molan. Mo Molan. She was one of the MPs. I know that name. And she right. negotiated uh, with, the, uh, with Northern Ireland to get a deal while she had cancer. Oh, right. She was an incredible woman. And I just think she'd be amazing to sit down. Uh, inspirational beyond belief. Did she ever so, write a book? Yes. She yeah, well, yeah, and I read her uh, autobiography. Yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing lady. One book you'd recommend every investor reads? So I got very, very frustrated with a lot of the property programmes right. that were on the telly. And albeit that we did this a few years ago, I've done the one and only uh, Buy to Let TV programme, albeit right. that we just put it online. And we have six programmes, and there's 20 min 20, uh, 15 to 20 minutes for each. Um, but they take you through, is buy to let a wise investment? It, are you, our biggest one and what one people watch most, and we've done an ebook for each one of them as well, oh. uh, with little checklists in them, so nice easy oh, right. to read. The one that's the, one of the most popular is all about the health and safety. And we actually interview one of the councils to get them to tell us what are the 10 top problems Right. that they see. Yeah. So for me, what I wanted to do was for anybody interested in buy to let, for them to see the real picture of buy to let from start yeah. to finish, 
thinking about it right through to exit strategy, should you go for a buy through a company, etc. So um, watch that, download the ebooks. That I know I'm sort of slightly self promoting there, but yeah, no, I have fine. written 11 other books. But that, yeah. that to me, actually, I, th I, I would hope and I'd really appreciate feedback because we'd like to do a more up to date one um, as to what you think. But um, that's probably the one I'm kind of the thing I've done that I'm most proud of. Yeah, no, that's great. We'll put a link in the description below so people can no, click on be, that. That would be really, I'd appreciate Check it that. out, definitely. Right, so just to finish off, what advice would you have for someone who's considering starting investing, but he's having doubts, he's sitting on the fence, what would you say to them? Go and talk to a financial advisor. Right. Really understand what is it you want financially. And that's what they're good at. And most of the people that I've done loads of one-to-one -one consultations at shows over the last 20 years with people, we've done the LBC property yeah. uh, hour, which you mentioned. And I think people, when people come to me, they often come to me with a deal and ask me what I think. Right. And I can't answer that because I don't know what their objectives are. What a financial advisor is there to do yeah. is to properly assess what, what money you have now and understand what money you're, you want and you are going to need in the future. Yeah. and then they work out the gap and okay. you might have a capital gap you might have an income gap and what you can then do is once you've identified how much capital you're missing or how much income you're missing yeah. can property deliver oh, and right. fill that gap for you and i suppose they and can manage it, your expectations absolutely as well, and is it the best way of doing it or should you put half of it into buy to let and half of it into something else yeah so I think what it will do is, we always think of uh, property, I think, as bricks and mortar. Yeah. But if you're investing in property, actually it's all about the money. Yeah. And it's about making sure that money that you put into property is going to get you work to where you want to be when you want to get there. Yeah. So if it's five years time, it might not be the right thing. But if it's 10, 15, 20 years, which is really what you've got to look at at buy to let, because you've got huge costs in, huge costs out versus yeah. other investments, that's the best way to do it, and then check your, check your tax situation. So if you do those two things first, if you know what you're missing, then you can assess a deal much better. Right. And that's, that's the real trick. That is actually the real trick, is to see it as money, and just that property happens to be delivering that gap for you. Great. Kate, thanks ever so oh, much for being here. It's great to see you and speak right. to you too. Yeah. Cheers. If you found this video useful, please like and share and definitely subscribe if it's your first time here so you won't miss any of my future videos which will all be geared towards helping you start or improve your property business. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.